If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. We can begin to solve this problem by drawing a simplified picture of this automobile. And by the way, please ignore this little symbol right here. I don't know why that's appearing in the video. And we can actually simply represent the car in an extended sort of rectangular shape as follows. We don't have to worry about the details. What we want to do is draw the forces that are acting on the body of the car here. Now the question notes that the center of gravity of the car is 1.78 meters behind the front axle. Why don't we call this spot right here the front axle. And as a result we can kind of go backwards a little bit and maybe right about here we can locate the center of gravity. So that's where the force of gravity is going to be acting on the car. And we can represent that force with a downward acting vector. We'll label that FG. Now, at the front axle, the wheels of the car are going to be pushing down onto the ground. And in response to that, the ground will be pushing back up on the car. Remember, we want to label the forces that are acting on the car. And so we have that reaction force from the ground pointing up. And in fact, since there are two wheels, there will be two reaction forces. So we need to make sure that we label this force two times the force that the ground is exerting on the front axle. Now similarly, in the back of the car, we're going to have the weight of the car pressing down on the ground and in response the ground will push back up on the rear axle and again since there are two wheels there are going or there is going to be a force equal to two times the force that the ground is exerting on the rear axle after drawing this free body diagram we can next turn to newton's second law which tells us that the sum of the forces acting in the y direction will equal the mass of the car times its acceleration. Now the car is in equilibrium, it's just sort of sitting here on the ground, so the acceleration is going to be zero. When we plug zero in and multiply by mass, we can see that the right hand side becomes zero. Now there are three forces acting in the y direction, and two of them are pointing upward, so they're going to be positive forces, so we can write positive 2fr plus positive 2ff, and then the gravitational force is acting downward and is therefore negative. Now we can write the gravitational force as Fg, or we can recall that the Fg is equal to Mg. So it might be better to substitute that, and then we'll set it equal to zero. So this is an equation that we're going to hold on to. But there's two unknowns. Both Fr and Ff are not known to us. So we need a second equation in order to solve. And to do that, we're going to turn to the sum of the torques also equaling zero. Now when applying the sum of the torques we have to select a pivot point and it's always a good idea to select your pivot point so that it's located at one of the unknown forces. So we could put the pivot over here or we could put it over here. And why don't we go ahead and arbitrarily put the pivot where we've indicated the FR force. And the reason that we do that is because the torque produced by this FR force will actually equal zero. Any force that's passing through the pivot actually produces zero torque. So we can exclude this force from our torque equation. And then before we actually plug in, we just want to be careful about identifying the distances from each force to that pivot point. Now the question noted that there's 3.05 meters between the front and rear axle, so we know that this distance right here is 3.05. And then we were told that the center of gravity is located 1.78 meters behind the front axle, so we'll have to subtract 3.05 minus 1.78 to get the distance from the pivot over to the gravitational force. And when we do that, we get 1.27 meters. Now we're ready to plug into the torque equation. Let's remember that torque is equal to a force times a distance times the sine of an angle. For the angle, we can note that the angle between FG and the car is 90 degrees, as is the angle between FF and the car. That's also 90 degrees. And the sine of 90 is actually 1, so that's going to drop out in this particular case. We also want to note that any force that causes a clockwise rotation is considered to exert negative torque, and any force that exerts a counterclockwise rotation exerts a positive torque. Hopefully we can see that Fg 
is trying at least to cause a clockwise rotation around this pivot. So that's going to end up being negative torque. And then the FF force is tending to produce a counterclockwise rotation around this pivot. That's going to produce a positive torque. Now with all those ideas in mind, we can plug into the sum of the torques. Let's begin with the FG force and we're following the torque equation again. So we'll take the force of FG, which was MG, multiplied by the distance to the pivot, which was 1.27. And then we have to recall that that was producing a negative torque. So we'll put a negative sign in front of it. And then we'll add the torque produced by this force over here. So we have two FF multiplied by the distance to the pivot, which is 3.05. Now that torque was positive, so we can leave that positive sign there, and then we set that equal to zero. Why don't we add the mg times 1.27 over to the right-hand side? And then we can divide both sides by two times 3.05 to solve for FF. The mass of the car was given as 1360, and g is 9.8. And when we compute that, we should get roughly 2.77 times 10 to the third Newtons. So this is the correct answer for the force that the ground is exerting on the front axle, which is actually the answer to part A of the question. Now that we have that FF force, we can plug it into the boxed equation from earlier, and that's going to allow us to solve for FR. So we've gone ahead and plugged in the FF force. We'll add this term over to the right side. We'll subtract this term and then divide by 2 to get the FR force. And when you do that, you should get roughly 3.89 times 10 to the third newtons. So this would be the force that the ground is exerting on the rear axle, and that is the correct answer to part B. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, click the thumbs up icon. Also subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.